Can you imagine being in third grade and having the entire fifth row center at a KISS concert for you to take your friends to and go backstage and meet the band during the Alive 2 tour? We what would you give what would, to what, get one of those what tickets? What would you give to get one of those tickets? And we talked to the person this actually happened to. Oh, and his last name? Delaney. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of uh, Three Sides of the Coin. You get two sides today. PM post mm -hmm. Um So, before we jump into today's special guest, which we've been, we've had this guy booked for, I don't know, three, four weeks now. We had to push him back because of some of the Hall of Fame drama. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this guy's stories. Me you too. Know, it's, it, this is not a guy who... who was a musician this was not a guy who was in there recording as an engineer he wasn't a studio player but this was a guy who was there at the very beginning saw it through the eyes that most of us would only dream of seeing it um i think his stories could be really interesting well yeah and, and what we're doing for you guys today again in our quest to bring you interviews or guests that we find to be fascinating we're, uh, can you imagine sitting in your bedroom when you're a kid listening to one of the Kiss albums thinking, if I could only be friends with them or if I could only be around them if at I only, that age? If, if I only lived in the same house that they were in. Yeah, what that would be like. Well, today we're going to try to take you back in time and share some of that with you. Yeah, yeah. So, so fear not, interviews are not going away on this show at all. We've got no matter what you've heard. No matter what you've heard, no matter what you are convincing yourself to think, nothing's changing except the third side of the coin. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So before we get going here, um, I know this is not the favorite part for some people, but hey, got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Thank you, everybody, for your uh, reviews on iTunes. We appreciate it. We read them. It means a lot to us. Um, thank you for following us on Spreaker. Um, it's, it's huge. That's what helps us get onto iHeartRadio and get, gets played on iHeartRadio. Um, I also want to do a quick shout out, make a special mention. The guy's been a, a big supporter in the last couple of weeks. Thank you to Matt Rayner, mm. who completely on his own started up the Brandvold Ilk group on Facebook. Just go search for the Brandvold Ilk group, not the page. I started the page just to hold the name. But there's an mm -hmm. active group. He's running it. He's admitting it. He's it, it's his baby. Um, it's it's very cool that he's taken charge of this. It's well over a hundred fans are already in it. Um, seems like discussions going on all the time. So Matt, um, huge Thank shout you. out. Thank you for that. Um, I also want to mention because it's been posted online, but we haven't mentioned it in the show. If you want a three sides of the coin guitar pick. Here's an address. If you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope and one U.S. dollar, I don't want Canadian money, I don't want foreign currencies because I'm not going to go deal with converting it. And it's got to be in an envelope with postage on it because I'm not dealing with postage. Um, send one dollar literally to cover the cost of the pick because the picks cost us one dollar each to make. Um, send it to three sides of the coin. 3001 Bridgeway Boulevard, Suite K, as in KISS, number 251, Sausalito, which is spelled S-A-U-S-A-L-I-T-O, California 94965. So if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope to that address with one dollar in it, we'll throw a guitar pick in and drop it in the mail and send it back to you. Please, one per person right now. We're not rolling in guitar picks, so I don't want somebody to like buy 50 guitar picks and then nobody else gets any. Right. Um, and then I think we should make a quick mention. Thank you to all of the audition videos that have been coming in. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed. 
with the number that we've received so far, and we still want to see more. So please, yeah. if you have any interest in doing this and being a part of what Mike and I are doing, we'd love to hear from you. And yeah. all we're looking for is a three-minute video introducing yourself to us. Say what you want to say. doesn't matter if you're a fan of one ear of the band and not another. We don't care about any of that. We're looking for personality, and we're looking for you to keep our interest for three minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've, we've got no deadline set right now because we're not bound and determined to have a new co-host by next week. It takes us two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. We'll do it. Um, so, you know, if you've got any interest, just jump in front of a webcam, post it up to YouTube, send us the URL to that YouTube video as a Facebook message uh, at Three Sides of the Coin on Facebook, and we will add it to the pile. I know last weekend I spent Saturday morning just going through, you know, a couple dozen audition tapes that, that had already arrived, and there's more coming in every day. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's fair to make this point to a couple of basic things. Do not contact us to help you make the video. If you can't figure out the most very basic way to do something like this, you're probably already out of the loop because you have to have a certain amount of understanding of the technology because we can't do it for you. Uh, you have to have a good landline connection. Uh, you have to have a stable you know, internet you can't be doing it from your cell phone. You know, I know it's the no budget show, but at the very least, we try to all be in the same spot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's let's be honest. That audition tape is like a resume. Yep. And you're sending in a resume, and that's what we're gonna that's gonna make an impression on us, and um, do the best you can to make a great impression. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and you know, there's been some great videos that have arrived. Some really mm -hmm. great ones, you know. We're looking for a three-minute tape. You don't have to, you don't have to talk for twenty minutes. But whatever you want to talk about is up to you in that. But again, you've got to make an impression. You've got to show your personality. You know, you want us to be interested enough to say we like this. Yeah, I agree. So we've got a few more minutes before the guest. Some big news. So we're actually recording this on a different day. We usually record this Tuesdays prior to the release, and we're recording this on Monday, March seventeenth, for this to be released tomorrow, because right. we had to accommodate our special guest. Uh, this morning, big press conference. Kiss, Huge. Kiss Def Leppard tour confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, did, did you watch it live? Yeah, I did, and I posted all the dates up on our page. Uh, for those of you who wanted to see it quickly, it's up there for you. There's 40 dates. So what, what, I get, was, what was your uh, first takeaway from the press conference? To me, it was get rid of Motley Crue and put in Def Leppard. There's no difference. I mean, I, I haven't seen Def Leppard, and I was thinking about this the other day, in probably 30 years. And I think it's a great double bill. The only issue I have with the double bill is, is that I'm going to get less Kiss and more Def Leppard. And it's going to be probably two 80-minute sets. And uh, that's my issue with it more than anything else. I, it, it, I would be much more excited if they tagged an extra 50 bucks on to the ticket and each played two hours. Yeah, but you know, somebody's been posting, ticket prices are not cheap. Like top-of-the-line mm. tickets are going for like $195. Yeah, but that's still considerably less than Madonna and Pink. Those are based... A lot of those well, baseline tickets were three hundred and fifty, so yeah. I I expect to pay two hundred dollars for a ticket. I you know I I'm not excited about Def Leppard. Period. I'm not a huge fan of theirs. I saw. I, I've I'm okay. I've, I've seen them once, probably eight nine years ago. I think it was uh, Foreigner, Sticks, and Def Leppard touring together, and Ugh. and. I actually went to see Sticks because I'm a big fan of theirs, and okay, I got to see Def Leppard, and I was just not—they just don't do it for me. They don't excite me. So, so Kiss doing a tour with Def Leppard is just like yawn. Hey, you know, they—they—I was not impressed by the show. It was too meticulous. It was too clean. It was too perfect. It was—it it, it just was not a raw show to me. Um, you're right. You're going to get two shorter sets by both bands because it's a co-headlining tour. Yeah. Um, but 
that's the state of touring these days. Everybody co-headlines, unless you're Bruce right. Springsteen, U2, Rolling Stones, Bon Jovi. Yeah. Um, you know, I just saw it. Rod Stewart and Santana are co-headlining. I mean, you know, a yeah. few years ago, those guys would be touring on their own. Right. So, well, I, I guess I I say I would rather watch Def Leppard than many other choices that could have been made. Uh, the last time I saw them, Pyromedia had just come out and it hadn't taken off yet, so they were opening for either Queen or Billy Squire. I can't remember which one, and they were excellent. I used to really like Def Leppard years and years ago. I just kind of lost interest. Not that I don't think they're good. I just, eh, you know. Yeah. And and now nothing has been specifically said by Kiss. But they came out in the same costumes, so I don't think we're getting new costumes. Paul no. talked about the the same stage and that, so I'm assuming it's going to be the exact same stage, same ga gags and everything. So for the most part, you know, yes, the Monster Tour didn't really tour U.S. last year, so this is the mo continuation of that. They're touring the U.S. Right. now. Um, I just. I don't know. I just don't feel a huge like excitement like I did when the Monster Tour was announced and you saw brand new costumes and brand new staging and all of that. Now this just sort of in my gut I feel like are we going back into the routine that got us into the same stage that they used for 10 years. Yes, it is. And in fact, what scares me the most about Def Leppard is because of the crossover fans, there'll be so many people there because Def Leppard has a huge following that will could care less about KISS that are there for Def Leppard who will be exposed to KISS for the first time. So you only know that they're going to play every one of the hits or all of the expected songs. Yeah, yeah. Now, when last week when it was posted on military.com that this was going to be the 2014 Heroes Tour, which I think is very cool. They're, they're yes, going that's out excellent. in full support of the military on this. That That is very cool. I, I have no issues with that. But I was like, well, what happened to the 40th anniversary tour? Mm -hmm. Good question. And I guess this is still a 40th anniversary tour. They talked about this being their 40th anniversary. The little graphic says... 40th anniversary above the KISS logo, I kinda, it, it, it feels like it's sort of a little ho-hum, oh yeah, that's right, let's call this 40th anniversary tour and nothing special is happening because of it. You know, we, right. you know, what, a year ago we talked about what we would love to see for the 40th anniversary, and I gotta tell you, I don't feel like anything's really happened. No. Well, and also, too, I almost wonder if some of the debacle with this whole Hall of Fame thing could have played kind of, it. Yeah, that's really kind of gotten... Because think about it. If they would have... If it would have worked out the way it, people had hoped that it had worked out, and everyone was being inducted, and the four original guys were playing, um, would that have parlayed into something else? Would that have been a meeting of the minds? Would they have ended up doing something where everybody's contributing on tour? I don't know. I have a feeling this Kiss Def Leppard tour has been in the planning stages prior to the Hall of Fame. Yes. So, so I, I, I don't know. I just, overall, I just feel like the 40th anniversary so far has been a whimper. At best. At best. There's no... Mm -hmm. There's no big, let's salute the 40 years, let's do something special online, let's do... I just, I feel like it's just KISS continuing on the same machine, nothing wrong, they're moving forward, they're still playing shows, touring and everything else, but you know, this is like the only time they're going to have an anniversary. 40th anniversary, it's, almost... it, 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 it's now or never, and, and let's be honest, it was actually more realistic to count last year as their 40th anniversary. Right. Not well, this uh, year, but still, I just feel like, what happened? Well, do you think some of it could be just simply because they've been around for 40 years and they haven't quit, it's not as big of a deal to them as, say, the Beach Boys getting together for their 50th anniversary tour and Brian comes out on tour with them and Al Jernine, all the guys get together and they did a tour. It was a real epic celebration of 50 years because they're not touring almost every single year or doing stuff. So maybe it's not as important to them in a 40th 
anniversary scenario as it is to another band that hasn't been around as, as much or as often. That, that's true. I mean, let, I'll, let's think back to the Creatures of the Night tour. That was their 10th anniversary tour. Right. That's how they build it. And frankly, mm-hmm. it was, you know, as a, as a KISS fan back then, I don't remember any big deal about it being 10 years. No, they just put it on the ads they, and put it on the shirts. Exactly, in the tour book, and, and that was it. So I, I feel like that's what's going to happen here. And I just, I guess I just feel like as a fan, I wish there would be more to do about a 40th anniversary. Maybe there still mm-hmm. is. You know, again, it's only March 17th. Right. There's plenty of time left this year to do something. God knows they can pull surprises out of their butt that, you know, jaw drop us every once in a while. So I'm not saying nothing's happening. I'm just saying this would have been a moment where I felt like there could have been something that said, oh, you know, yeah, and it's our 40th anniversary. And yeah, we're put, we put together a brand new stage with a great multimedia experience showcasing all of the history. I mean, the farewell tour had, to me, a better anniversary presentation than what they might be coming out with now. I mean, you remember all the videos that they would play on this, you know, all the right. historical video clips. That was cool. Right. Well, it could just be ill-fated timing too that they didn't pace themselves out properly because if you think about it, they they put the Monster album out. They started the Monster tour. It didn't really go anywhere, and then they did the tour tour with Motley Crue, and now here they're back doing the Wounded Veterans thing. Yep. So it's it it's almost like they keep shifting gears and there wasn't a fluid plan from beginning to end. At least that's the way it feels. Yeah. I, you know, the, they've got a lot of, a lot of balls in the air and I'm sure they had hoped it would probably plan out one way. And like you said, a change and went a different way. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, let, let I guess I need to tell myself, let's just wait and see. Let's wait and see what the tour looks like when it kicks off. Let's see what the set list sounds like maybe they are going to do something say something maybe they're going to have some special videos i just hope it's more than putting 40th anniversary on the tour book and some t-shirts that to me feels like a letdown i agree so tommy i think it's time to hit the play button with our special guest we're going to have the introduction in his interview segment but russ delaney is joining us and that last name, Delaney, should say mountains to people. Mm-hmm. And we'll let you listen to the interview. You can figure out who Russ Delaney is, what his relationship is to Sean. And I think you guys are going to freaking love this interview. I, I put this up here with our Megan McCracken and our Lynn Christopher interview in that it was... Deep minutia. It, it, minutia. A fun conversation. I just felt like we were just shooting the shit with Russ. Right. So yeah, it was great. Hit the play button, and uh, this is Russ Delaney. Hey, everybody. I would love to welcome this week's special guest, and I think his last name is going to um, resonate with everybody. Russ Delaney, thank you for joining us today. Hey, well, thank Russ. You for, thank you for having us, having me, gentlemen. So and all you Kiss fans out there. So so obviously Kiss fans know the name Delaney. Russ Delaney is Sean Delaney's nephew. And Russ reached out to me on uh, I think on an email, I don't know, a couple months ago because you had saw my interview I think that I had posted about Sean that I've done many years ago and you were just thanking me for, you know, keeping Sean's name out there and everything else and I was just like I had no idea that you existed. You know, <laughs> I, I, as a as a Kiss fan, the only Delaney I knew of was Sean. Right. And and since then, there's Russ Delaney, and um, I've uh, I found your dad Leon as well. Yep. Yeah. So Leon was a roadie. Leon was a roadie for for Kiss very early on, but it yeah. just it hit me, and and you started telling me some of your. Um, your history with Kiss, and I was just like, oh, wow, this is just going to be very cool. This is very cool. And and I think what I want to do is just take everybody right back. One of the first things you said was, if 
if our listeners remember the interview we did with Megan McCracken, and she talked about the house that Bill O'Coin and Sean Delaney had that Megan lived in with them. I don't know, was it like in upstate New York? I think it was. New, New City. New City. Um, Russ also lived there, right? I don't. We stayed there stayed a lot. There. We actually had we had an apartment or a, a, a lived in Long Island. I was in a, you know kindergarten, first grade um, when we moved out to 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 get back with my mom to try and get back with my dad when all the kiss stuff was starting out. Um, that would have been what kindergarten seventy two. Seven yeah seventy two was that seventy three is when their first when yeah. they really became kiss seventy four yep. the album. Yep. So, so we were there at the, for the beginning of that. We'd go up to the house in New City, and and then they had an apartment in um in in one of the boroughs, some Manhattan, I'd imagine. And uh, you know, there at the beginning, with my dad was still working construction as it was taking off, and Bill and Sean's relationship was just starting when they met Kiss, and and so I have two different lives with them. Um, the beginning, and then my mom and dad didn't get along very well, so we moved back to Utah. And then we'd, we'd go out to New York, and then when they'd come through the West, you know, I'd come to Vegas or, or see them in Salt Lake City. And as we got older, we'd go back out to New York until the, until the you know, early 80s when, when, uh, when a coin soul kiss and Sean um, quit or got fired, depending on what story you hear. <laughs> so, so there's two different stories, you know, there's like two different lives there. And then, and then I got to be really good friends with my uncle at the end of his life. He came to Vegas and stayed with me for two to three weeks, and, and he was living in Sedona and, and living in Utah again. So there's really, you know, kind of three chapters, if you will. Well, so so let's let's um, let's go start chapter one. You know, at the very beginning. So, roughly, how old were you? I mean, you were obviously a little kid. How old were you yeah. when when you first um, were introduced to Kiss, or you know, you heard people talking about them? Yeah. Five. You know, when we were living there and they started. Okay. Uh, so so so, so so for all of our viewers, and this is what I want to really try and capture. Think back to when you were five years old. Think back to when you were a little kid, and if you, through those eyes, first saw Kiss and were able to interact closely with Kiss like Russ, that's yeah. that's the interesting part here to me. One, they were larger than life, the four of them, when I would see them. You know, my uncle was my uncle, and, and I kind of knew him, all, and, and Bill is a little, you know, the little cute guy that Bill was and will be in our hearts forever. Um but the, the, with the hair and the and the and the, the way they acted, it just they came across as almost as uh, you know, I don't know, uh, superheroes in a sense. Just you know, like starstruck. Like when they walked in, I kind of woo. And this is shit. out. This is out of makeup, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely out of makeup. Um, and the, the hair and the energy and the, and the and the 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 charisma and the and the and the power between the four of them was just. It was just neat to to be that young and be around it. And and Gene, um, being a fan of kids, he he actually would put me on his shoulders and stuff. And I, I don't I don't know Paul. You know I just have better memories with Gene, um, being more friendly, if you will, or you know because they obviously they were busy. And they were trying to get their their dreams and their goals together. So so they they would be coming out to the to the house to yep. have meetings with Sean and Bill to talk about yep. things, and you would just be. What sitting around, hanging around, just fly on the wall? Yeah, yeah, just like fly on the wall, you know, come and go, and then, um, and then there was a studio, and I, you know, being that young, you, you know, your memories—that's when you first start to have your memories. Right. And 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 I remember there was a studio, and 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 they were together in the studio, and then they talk about the album, the first album, the what, the Kiss, the Kiss, Kiss album, right? Right. Yeah. Remember the makeup and <laughs> all that. So yeah, I was around at that that early part, and then my mom. They, she got on a plane and we and we moved back to Utah uh, and then I would go out and see them and as I got older you know through second grade third grade fourth grade and then they started taking off that's when when um like I saw them get you know backstage at the the Salt Lake City at the um, Terrace Ballroom and I actually hmm. got to watch them put get all uh, from start to finish and so you were you you were in the dressing room uh -huh. as they were wow. But, Few times. Okay. You, you were behind the Superman curtain. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I sure was. And it was a uh, it was awesome. I mean, not every little kid in Spanish Fork, Utah gets to watch Kiss get ready for their concert. So so, you know, what do you remember back to the beginning at that house about Sean and and his involvement with with Kiss? I mean, did 
did Sean, as your uncle, talk to you? Was he like, oh, you got to see what I'm doing? It was more through my dad. Cool? Sorry. It was more through my dad's, um, you know, stories about it, how Sean was, um, the way I understand the story, and this is, you know, this is now going to the third chapter of Sean re let me help my, with my memories back then, but, you know, just this band that had all this energy, and they had, and, and they were driven to be superstars, and, and with, with, uh, with, uh, with geese, um, connections, if you will, and you guys probably know more about what he did in his background with the, with the, uh, what's it called, the Flip side? shows, in New York, the show, Broadway shows, and, yeah. and the commercials, and all that stuff, those connections, and then a coin told me himself in Hollywood, Florida, years later, that Sean Delaney was the most, had the greatest imagination of any man he'd ever met, or, or more, um, oh, what's the word called, not imagination, but uh, creativity, cre cre yes, Sean, Bill told me with his own eyes that Sean was the most creative man he ever met. And, and so, you know, the, the makeup, the hair, the dance moves, you know, a lot of that. I don't know how much was Sean's, but I remember they were always talking about it. They were always talking about how to make it bigger, better, faster. It really hadn't even started yet. So they were way, because you remember how fast it took off? Yeah. It was overwhelming to me, and I was a kindergartner. But, um, I mean, they went from this little band playing in, in bars in Manhattan to all of a sudden, you know, open up for Aerosmith and, and people wanting them more than Aerosmith. So... It, it did take off really fast. It took off so fast my mom couldn't handle it. She, I mean, she, we moved back to Utah. But, um, you know, the next thing you know, they're all together. They were, my dad, according to him, was helping front money with his construction income that couldn't have been that much. Remember the old story about the one credit card? Right. Yeah. Well, I saw that credit card, the American Express card, many times. <laughs> so, so, you're, you're, so your dad, Leon, is Sean's brother, and, and Sean – brought Leon in to, to help as a roadie and get things I, rolling? Sean, Dad just moved to New York just because I think his brother did. And I don't even know how close they were because my, my uncle's a couple, my, my dad's a couple years younger than Sean. And, um, and he went to New York just to, I think Sean talked him into, you know, there's more construction work out there and, and I'm going to try and make it, you know, I came out to be a musician and you can be here with me. And then one thing led to another, and now he's got a full-time job as a Kiss roadie. Nepotism works. And 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 you were saying that that your dad invested some of his construction money to well, help get Kiss off the ground. I, according to his stories, but how much money he made? Just at the beginning, there wasn't a lot of money involved, sure. but they all had that common belief. Gene being the the frontmost that I remember that they were going to make it no matter what. And, and as the pieces slowly got put together, and it wasn't that big of a team, as you all know. It was yeah. the four band members, a coin and my uncle and a few other people. My dad ended up marrying uh, a coin's first secretary named Melanie. That was Melanie Delaney, who was my stepmom for years. Okay. And oh, okay. Bill Coyne, oh, yeah, Bill uh, fronted their wedding, um, brought him in like family. I mean, Bill, as we know, just was gracious and wonderful and big-hearted. And I can sit here and talk about Bill Coyne for hours and start crying. But, um, you know, they just, they all had this common belief that I even felt as a kindergartner, that you just felt that they weren't going to be denied. Right. That they were going to, you know, they were going to be the best. That you want the best, you got the best. And uh, it, was, it was neat to see, even with my young eyes, how focused and what you can accomplish when, you know, no, 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 you know, you know all that stuff. No, you're not going to make it. You're not good enough and that and that and then. You know, then they found one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived, in my opinion, and and uh, the rest. You know, then they just took off. And were they ready for it? I don't know. According to my mom, they weren't. According to Coin, they just they weren't. They didn't have the 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 players in place. All the management you need to be that big, because you know he already had a management company. You guys right, know that, right? right? With uh, Billy yeah. Idol, and I remember Billy Squire. I remember seeing Billy Squire in the elevator and asking my dad how. If he, he's got more hair than anybody I've ever met, and stuff, you know, stuff like that. The young Brian Adams was involved, but how young was he back then? Sixteen, wow. seventeen, helping write songs, and and so he, there was already a management. Bill already had his management, the coin management, right? Was already in place a little bit, and then they find these four guys rocking out in the village, and and they just weren't big enough internally to handle it all. Do you, do you, do you go ahead, Tommy? Well, I was Please. just going to say. Can you think back to as you got older where you were more aware of what was going on and the reaction by some of your schoolmates and friends <laughs> around you when they found out that you, you know, your uncle worked for KISS and here you are going backstage and seeing him and all that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I could, you know, I, there, there's the stories I can tell forever. Is one, we had to prove to my principal when I was in third grade that my uncle was actually the manager of KISS. And, 
and we had to bring the stuff in and my dad had to call because I never understood why you'd make that up. But obviously being from a little town outside of Provo, Utah, but Sean was actually So so let me let me ask real quick. So you, you, yep. you, you had you had to prove to the yes. principal why? Because yes. you got in trouble for talking no, about it for breaking yeah, bragging that you know, how can you not brag about that? You know, you well, yeah. to, and, so, and plus I'm so like the a principal city is slicker. like you're 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 gonna get suspended unless you can prove to me that you're that Sean Delaney actually worked that's great. <laughs> yeah. It, and, you know, they said Sean Delaney and all that. And one thing I didn't understand to this day is, is that um, everybody's got to be from somewhere. And the yeah. fact that the, one of the original managers, I don't know how we actually word his beginning with Bill Coyne being his management company and Sean being his right-hand guy, however you want to word it. How do we word Sean's? I mean, I know when it, there's a Kiss trivia game where they say that he was their first choreographer. I mean, what yeah, is his, you know, does I, he I have don't the know, title? I don't, I don't know if there ever really has been, Tommy an official title for Sean? No, I mean, he I, just a lot, a struck me as the like, guy who was responsible. He was the fifth member yeah, of Yeah, the fifth member. And you know, that's actually his favorite. That's what he, he actually, on his deathbed, his, um, right before he died, he's really not a deathbed because he died suddenly, but when I talked, the last week I spent with him before he died, last time I saw him, his favorite thing that KISS fans, and they can all know this because he loved it, the favorite thing that he called himself and was called by KISS fans was the fifth KISS. That yeah. was because he, he hitchhiked from, from Houston, Texas to uh, New York City to be a singer-songwriter. And if you've ever heard his album that I think sold 300 copies, Sean Delaney yeah. Highway, he's got a neat voice. I don't know why he didn't really make it. Somebody like Cat Stevens and Gordon Lightfoot did because he was just as talented as, as those guys. And my, well, he's my uncle, so I'm obviously I'm going to be biased. But he, he hitchhiked. Timing. You guys know that he hitchhiked. Yeah, there you go. He hitchhiked. You know that part of the story, right? He hitchhiked yeah. New York City with a guitar and 20 bucks in his pocket to be a singer-songwriter. So that was his dream, and that's why he still tried the Scat Brothers and left Kiss mm -hmm. and Bill for a little bit to, to have his dreams come true instead of being behind right. the stage. Right. Um, so, yes, being in Spanish Fork, Utah and having your uncle be the manager of Kiss, and my two cousins live in Orem, which isn't too far away, but Sean actually went to high school in Pleasant Grove High School. Which is, you know, 20 minutes from the Mormon capital of the world. And to have the manager of KISS from a little small town in Utah. He, he, he didn't live there long. He went from Cranberry, New Jersey to, to, uh, to there. And my dad was born in Houston. And I don't know the exact timeline of everything. But Sean ended up in, in New York, I think, in like 69, 70. Okay. And was doing jingles with Paul Schaefer and how he met Bill. You know, the, the hospital where my uncle's boyfriend beat him up and all that good stuff, and, and, and Bill went and saw him, at a, ran into him at a restaurant, some kind of restaurant in the village where my uncle was a waiter waiting for his big break to come, and that's kind of how they met, as you guys probably so, know so, that story. No, know, he didn't. From, oh, you didn't? From, yeah. From, from, no. well, yeah, yeah, go ahead and finish that that's story. Why, that's why we're here. No, no, that's, they, um, he was, you know, this is according to them. I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but Sean was a, a, a waiter in a, uh, a club in the village, if you will, if you want to call it a gay club, we can. And a, co and a coin went there to see him, a good-looking fella, if you've seen early pictures of my uncle. Um, but I had a woman once tell me in, in a mall in Provo, Utah, she came up with my eyes and she said, are you a Delaney? I said, yes. She said, is, your, how, is Sean, he related to Sean? I said, he's my uncle. And she said, to this day, he's the best-looking man I've ever seen. I think a pretty good compliment. So anyway, go ahead, Michael, question. Well... So the pairing of Bill and Sean, you know, as a, obviously this is through the eyes of a kid, but you see, did you some, see some a magic, a magic Hold on, I'm getting some static. Oh, the, hold on, I'm getting some okay. static. Okay. That's, that's too bad. Okay, there you go. All right, so, so you know, through your eyes. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, no? I'm, Mike, I'm you're getting, getting real staticky. Really? Okay, I, better now. I, I'm good now. Okay. Yeah, now we're good. Okay, so through through your eyes, the pairing now of Bill of Bill and Sean together, what kind of working relationship was that? Was it was it you know a, a perfect gelling of two different you know the business side of Sean or the the business side of Bill with the creativity of Sean? Was it a perfect mix? In my in my eyes through the years as I saw it, I, I could you couldn't have drawn up any better. One strengths was the other one's weaknesses in a lot of ways. My uncle was not good with the business side of managing money and all that good stuff and and but as far as the creativity of the of the rock and roll because that's all he visualized you know he's like um most of the people in vegas we see these young bands start out they don't they're not visualizing the money part or the business side part they just want to rock and roll and jam so that's yeah. all sean wanted to do. he 
he wanted to play music. It was from the heavens when he sang, and he could do it all, guitar, piano, drums. Uh, I just read an interview, and Ozzy Osbourne's drummer credited Sean to helping him play in bigger arenas, you know, play to the guy at the very top, so that, you know, the first 100 rows are covered. Do you, do you because think... Because I dig online, and I... Do, do, do you think for Sean... Are you there, Russ? Okay, uh -huh, there we yep, go. I'm you, here. Froze, you froze yep. a little bit. Um, if 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 Sean hadn't left us, what would 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 he still want to try and go back and work with Kiss? Would he have wanted to go on and work with other bands? I mean, it it, it feels like from our side of things as fans that that Kiss was his perfect match. There was nothing yeah. better for him, and anything else would have just paled in comparison to try and uh do. You know, you you can't be more right on that one, Michael. And because of the way they took off so fast, and at one point, weren't they the most one of the top groups in the world? Yeah. Hence yeah. their Hall of Fame induction. So how are you going to top that? You know, it's like hitting a jackpot when you first come to Vegas. You know, it's going to happen every time. So when he when he it happened so fast, and this was in his words, word for word, it was like a hurricane that it just happened so so fast that when the cam down. And all of a sudden he woke up and didn't work. You know, he's in London, England when all, he found out that he wasn't working with them anymore when, when Bill uh, Gia sold him. He, you know, he always wanted to try and match that. He's, he's formed a band in Utah. I don't know if you guys knew that called Wasatch. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of a little catch, country, a uh, little catchy country band. And he wrote some songs for that band and they ended up being one of the best country bands in Utah to the point they moved to, to Nashville or Memphis, wherever the country people go. And to try and make it out there, and then they got in fights and, and internally uh, broke up. But to answer your question, yes, it was Kiss was it. I mean, how does it get any better than that? Yeah, yeah. you can't. You know, there, there, there's so there's so there's so many like tangents I want to explore here. So it's hard to keep the timeline going in in proper order here. Uh, but, this doesn't but, have to be the last time either. I love no. this. So so let me let me ask you when. When Kiss separated from Bill Coyne and Sean Delaney, what what are your memories of that? Did did what was what was Sean's feelings? What was his emotions at that well, point? How it, did it, it happen? When he came, how, how did how did how did the breakup happen? As far as Bill told us in Hollywood, Florida, he just thought they were done and sold them. He thought you know when they went disco with one of my favorite songs, I was meant for loving you and that album. Um, he just thought that they'd done, you know, Bill is a, a pretty smart businessman in, in my opinion. I mean, I don't, wasn't around him that much, but he do, he's been in business for years and he's flat out sold him. Malcolm's story is a little different than that, that, you know, they got this and that, but well, once a coin sold him and they went with a new management company, some of the guys or all the folks that were with a coin also got let go. So he wasn't ready for it by any means. And I think that was in 1980 and my dad had used um, a coin and, and my uncle's connections. To, he was in the movie Kiss Meets the Phantom. Right. And he met the guys that did the movie Warriors and parlayed that into a pretty successful stuntman career. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, oh, if, I if, love if, the Warriors. If, 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 out if, to LA. If, if the coin, fan, who's if out fans there. look up Leon Delaney on the IMDb, yes. you'll, you'll, you'll find him on there and you'll see quite an extensive listing of stunt work that he's done. It all started with, with Kiss Meets the Phantom. Great. That great movie. I remember we watched all watched it in Utah. All my buddies came over and, and we watched it. And I was a freshman in high school and he came home for just a little bit and then he ended up, you know, kind of like a gypsy. Sean was a uh I'll always love him for that. He was a he was a uh not scared of it, if you will, to kind of go go wherever to go. And then he tried to uh go to Portland or Seattle and meet up with uh Ace Freely's Comets. And he tried to get back into management, the backstage, just like he did with Kiss at a lesser scale. And because he was trying not to be the party animal that he was, I guess it, that didn't work out at all. I don't know the, you know, the, I know that I know the ending to Peter, Chris, and my uncle's relationship wasn't good. <laughs> One thing about Sean is he, he, it all started out great, 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 but sometimes the endings weren't the best. But well, so so so, so what what happened with Peter, Chris? With Peter, well, yeah, what happened according with to the book, uh, Sean just came out to. And I didn't know anything about it. Came out to Connecticut, was trying to help Peter with his solo career. And there's something about running down the street and the police being called. I just got done reading the book. Sean's in the book quite a bit. Have you guys read it yet? Oh, Peter's book? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Sean's all over. So I'm just going by the book there on what the ending. You guys read the book. It just didn't seem like it was a good ending between Sean and Peter. But, you know, but, but, but back, back to Sean's split with Kiss.
Mm -hmm. Did that um, did that hit him really hard? Did that really put him hard. into a depression? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, for me not being around him as much, and the cell phones weren't there, but he would call the house once in a while. Him and my mom were actually pretty good buddies, and um, and 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 he just he he kind of went into a tailspin of of not knowing where to what to do, because here you are for what ten years on top of the world, and everything couldn't be better. I mean, with issues here and there, and all of a sudden it's gone. And so, he, yeah, he didn't. You know, there was just where do you go with that? You start a new management company, and all of a sudden, I mean, how's that ever going to happen again? That's a, it's almost a fairy tale story. Right. Two guys sitting in a bar yeah. in Manhattan, and all of a sudden, kisses formed, and boom, boom, boom. Um, so he he went on. He did Indian tours in Sedona. I don't know if you guys knew that. He did that for a while. Where we've got some Indian in our family. I don't know extensive. Uh, I've actually got more Indian stuff from him than I do kiss stuff from what he passed. <laughs> I'm working on the kiss stuff. <laughs> 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 my, my two, we actually have two more cousins. We have uh, my dad has two daughters, and and they both have the last name Delaney, and then that's it. The Delaney our tree part of the family's done. My son, I, my son's Delaney. My daughters, but they'll change. And then my dad's got two daughters that Sean hardly met because they had a fallen out. And uh, then I have two cousins in Utah that us three um, were. Uh, I guess the his what do you call it, the will. We're, we're his um, 33, 33, 33 of his right. trust and his ASCAP stuff. Because, you know, he did write a few notes through the years, and they were still a little bit of, I don't know what. I turned that over to my cousins. But When, 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 when the Delaney's have get-togethers, family reunions or whatever, <laughs> is there still is there discussion of, of Sean and Kiss? <laughs> but, you know, it's funny, honey, he just asked about the family get-togethers. Um, it's so funny that you'd say that, Michael, for a couple of reasons. My, me and my two cousins, have, since the funeral, we haven't even talked much. And, uh, but we, we don't not, not like each other. In fact, Dee Dee wished me happy birthday today. He's the, she's oh, yeah, the by cousin. the way, it is your birthday. Thank you. Happy, thank, happy, yeah, birthday, happy birthday, St. Patrick's Day with the last name Delaney. You can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I will say this. One of my favorite things my dad has said to me through the years is, boy, you talk about your uncle and the kiss stuff so much more than you talk about me and my stunt stuff. Well, I'm not a big movie guy. And the movies I like are, are comedies, suspense movies, and, and uh, chick flicks. Like not Aaron a lot Brock. of stunt work in those. Not a lot of stunt yeah. work, yeah. And, and uh, no, the kiss thing to me and, and all my buddies and, and, and my close friends and the, my coworkers, we've always got to, you know, that's pretty neat to be able to say that your uncle was... I, I've always said the manager just because I you can't get into split details. I just right. always called him the manager, the original manager of Kiss, which that was a coin, and he was coin's right hand man. Um, but yes, w do I talk about Kiss a lot with my friends? And, and yeah, I mean, the, my wedding, my buddies played Kiss all night, and and we'll always uh, it will always be a, a part of my life. That how, how can I say this? People will say, well. How come you? How come you don't work? How come you don't do this and this and this? And I said, well, I'm not the one that managed Kiss. I'm not the one that helped get him going. That was my right. uncle. I just happened to be yeah. his nephew. You just that went along right. and had a good time. Yeah, I probably saw him in concert, gosh, 20, 20, 25 times through the years. And then the the weird one in 1985, the Lick It Up tour. Me and my buddies actually paid to go see him, and that was kind of weird because I went from three years ago being backstage watching him get ready and going out to dinner with him after to all of a sudden paying my own money to see the lick it up tour. So that was and that was that was that was my fall from grace, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, so tell us some things that you remember about your interactions with him personally as you got older. You know, the, the neat thing is as we got older, the biggest question you'd get from your buddies was, have you seen them with their makeup off? <laughs> and you know how cool that is because we're about you know we're on the same age group and and yeah. and to me it was I grew up with them with the you know the first three or four years that's all I ever saw them was with their makeup off and so w when I would tell people I'd actually seen them with their makeup off the reactions were off the charts as you can imagine sure. being in Spanish Fork Utah I mean being right. in New York City or being you know in big cities maybe it would have been that big a deal but boy you know being the first member of Kiss one of the original members of Kiss Army. I got my. Uh, I had a hernia operation in third grade, and they sent me the, the, the one of the comic books with their autographs. Get well soon, Rusty. We miss you. It was just kind of cool, and that kind of stuff. As far as as the interaction, you know, more so when Sean and Gee, there was a point where I almost had to go live with Gee because my mom and my mom and I had a, kind of a weird relationship. I was going to move in, and Gee was all for it. I'm glad I didn't have to, but how nice was that? So as far as the interaction with Kiss go. the terrace ballroom they were supposed to play at the salt palace this was the uh dress to kill tour okay 
Well, what year was that? 77? 75. 75. 75. No, it might have been. It might have been uh, one of the later ones, like 77, 70. I know 78 was Kiss Alive too, right? You right. guys have that stats better than I do. But yeah. and, um, and can I wait a second? I want to jump in real quick because we're going to get flame for this. We have Russ on as a guest. I'm speaking to the people watching. We're aware that the some of the dates might not be right, but we're just going with this because we want the information. So before you flame all of us for not correcting one thing or another, people just hang with us here, okay? Well, enjoy sorry, the please continue. Enjoy the yeah. conversation, people. This is not a factual debate. No. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, you know, like I was young, I was, you know, it, 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 and well, anyway, uh, one year they were coming to play at the Salt Palace, and the Salt okay. Palace either got robbed or started on something happened where they had to switch the terrace ballroom. And I hadn't seen Kiss in a couple of years because I'd moved back to Utah. So we go backstage and we're watching him get dressed, and I get to see my dad. Sean wasn't even there that that he didn't always tour with him. You know, him and him and a coin had a lot of you know other things going on. But because right. my dad was a roadie, he was he was there. So and I, let, me, let me ask real quick. As a roadie, what was he doing on the road? What was his job? You know, I, I don't know exactly. Just the, the equipment, you know, probably okay. manual labor. You okay. know, he's got some good stories. One time he was passed out, and, and Steve Tyler asked him if he thought he was dead. Um, he, my dad's – you guys just get my dad on. I mean, he's, he's yeah, a reckless – yeah, so he'll just turn it into a stunt conversation. No, well, we kidding. can talk about the Warriors. Yeah, oh, you bet. Oh, the Warriors, yeah, you bet. So, uh, in fact, my dad's new girlfriend is a big, <laughs> kiss, big kiss fan and a Warrior fan. Oh, wow. So, she, yeah, he met her. He, my dad just did a kiss convention in, in New York somewhere. Okay. And he okay. met her at a, at a kiss convention. She's cute. <laughs> and she, she loves kiss. Her whole apartment's all in kiss. I mean, I walked in, I thought I was at a kiss Hall of Fame thing already. Um, so, and so anyway, the, the, the Salt Palace, something happened to it where they had to go from a 14,000 seat venue to about a 2000 seat venue called the Terrace Ballroom. And you guys can look this up. It'll be factual as factual gets. They dropped me off. My aunt dropped me off at the side door and here my dad opens up. I go in and I hadn't seen him in a couple of years and I'd only seen him once live. Right, because okay. this is my this is my second time ever seeing him with a makeup on and live, and we're right off the side side where the general public could not get to. Right, and Gene actually blew his fire and licked his tongue at me and all that. It actually scared me because I hadn't seen it. I'm seven eight years old. I'm like ah. So that was one of my my uh, that was one of my. Talk. You know, I was excited to see my dad. I mean, you're a young kid and your dad's not in your life, and and so I couldn't wait to see him. Um, the great story that you guys were like about third grade, so it would have been a year later, Kiss Alive 2 tour, okay. Cheap, Cheap Trick opened up for him. Okay. We got the whole, like, fifth, sixth row was all my uncle's tickets for his, my, my grandma, who was very high up, or very Mormon in church. She brought one of her relief side buddies. My buddies, in, I got like six tickets. So my buddies in Spanish Fork were trying to give me all the baseball cards. And oh, I got to imagine what, that, that you, you, you were the king in yeah. school. Yeah, I was the king. They're trying to, uh, I remember one kid wanted to give me his whole basketball card collection just so he could get a ticket. Um, that was my favorite night as far, because my cousin got to bring a couple friends. I got to bring a couple friends. And we had the whole row. And they got to go backstage, and my uncle was so proud because him and my him and his dad. I don't know if you guys know the story, but um, my our dad, his my grandpa is half Indian, half Irish, and not big. Remember, this was the fifties when Sean was growing up, right. and not you know society's changed a lot. Thank goodness, we still got a lot of ways to go. But and I guess grandpa wasn't real fond of of, of Sean's sexual orientation, if you will. So he wanted so bad to always look, look, to earn his dad's love and respect. Right. I remember one Christmas he bought him a truck, and, and my dad's going, what are you doing? I mean, here's this dad, The guy treats you like crap all these years, and now you're – but, you know, it's anything to, to earn your, your parents' sure. affection, right? Right. So here's my grandpa and grandma. And kiss alive, too. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the on the fifth or sixth row, right in the middle, you know, right under the stage, and then uh, yeah, that that's my uh, that's I, I I spent more of the night watching my grandma and grandpa's reaction than I did watching the sure um, picture seeing Kiss for the first time and not knowing what you're you know like when they went out to Hollywood to show the stars what they're doing that ballroom thing and they they scared everybody. And then two songs later, they're all dancing. I don't know if you guys know that story when a coin was trying to promote them. 
out, out, out at the when when the first album was released. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They went out to Hollywood, and, and something happened where they, you know, it was like a, like a ballroom. It was supposed to be all primp and proper, and then Kiss comes out and starts rocking and rolling. Ah, yeah. that well, first well, time. It was, it was like in um, in the book Nothing to Lose, which if you haven't read it, I would. I have not. You should you should get that. They talk about how early on Kiss went and played this private event for a in New York for a, a library. <laughs> and like Morley Safer was there, and people were in tuxedos and gowns, and it's just and, bizarre. Yeah, it's just bizarre. That is that. That might be the story. I'm, or, or maybe that something else happened like that. The one in the Hollywood that you know, my dad was telling me about. So that's exactly what the reaction was. I think when we all first saw him, even if you, even if I watched him first saw Kiss for the first time, I think we all remember the reaction was, "Oh my goodness gracious." Something yeah. like we've never seen. To this day, my favorite band, I mean, ACDC just went right with them. So right. my, my dad actually asked me one time, because all I do in Vegas is go to concerts. I've been to hundreds of them. My dad actually asked me, you think growing up with your uncle being, being around Kiss has to do with you loving to go to concerts? And I'm like, of course it does, because you know, we all have our childhood. I love it to this day. Mm -hmm. Well, then I want to go back to grandma and grandpa. So how did they <laughs> handle it that night? That, no, they just, they loved it. You know, I, I, I mean... I don't care. No matter how much my grandpa did not like Sean's sexual orientation, okay, right. with that being aside, I think anytime our sons or daughters make it to the top of their profession, you got to be a little bit proud. And yeah. he's a, he's, he was a six foot four, broad shouldered, big man. And, and you could just see that he was proud. And that's all he ever wanted. So that was, that was Sean's um, coming. That was his. In, in my opinion, his, his finest moment as far as his personal life and his professional life coming together. When Kiss played Kiss Alive 2 in, in the Salt Palace, sold out, obviously. Yeah. And, and you know, I made it. And then, and then that year, probably Christmas, they got him the truck to, you know, explanation point. And my grandpa drove that truck till the day he died prouder than that. He, uh, he actually had a business years ago, and, and it went south, so he didn't have a lot going in. So, you know, and, and Bill was just so nice to, to the whole family, mind-boggling to the day. I mean, I, I, I maintained a friendship with Bill through the years. That's great. Yep, yep. So, I talked to him two weeks before he passed. Russ, uh, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I want to come back to that relationship with Bill at the end here, but when was the last time you saw any of the guys in KISS? Well, the, the the fun story is, and and uh, is we I went and saw Ace. We played Ace Freely played at House of Blues, and my buddies went, and I told one of Ace's guys, one of his roadies, if you will, I said, "Listen, this isn't uh, for me. This is for my uncle and for Ace." Okay, I would love for you to tell Ace Freely that Russ Delaney, Sean Delaney's nephew's in the building, and I'd love to come back and say hi. Not for me, but for the two of them, because right. they have a great relationship, as you know. Ace sure. and Sean had great relationship. And, and it actually, right in front of a couple of my buddies, the, the guy actually said, he said, you know, I've never, I, I don't know who your uncle is. And I've been with Ace since 78. I said, you've been with Ace since 1978 and you don't know who Sean Delaney, how about PJ? I mean, what name do you want to use here? And I said, what about a coin? What about Bill a coin? He said, we, were, we had a coin, w dinner with a coin two nights ago in, at his home. I said, in Hollywood, Florida. Now, how would I know that? I, I was just, my wife and I were with Bill in Hollywood, Florida, uh, what, eight years, uh, 10 years ago? That was nice. We had lunch with him, spent a couple hours with him. And uh, so that was, I really haven't had any reaction. I mean, I haven't had any, I haven't seen them, any of them. And, and I, in Vegas, you know, Gene's here all the time. Sure. And I can't wait to run into him. And it will happen. You think he'll put, uh, on, yeah. he'll put you on, your, on his shoulders? <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. Not at 220 pounds, he won't. But he, he'll still call me Little Rusty, though. Uh, years ago, they played at Mandalay Bay on St. Patrick's Day. And it was sold out. And me and a few buddies, they said, hey, why don't we go see Kiss? We've been out all day. And you remember the old, uh, the, they had the same uh, security guard forever. Was big, it Mike? Big, 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 John John, Hart? big John Hart. Big John Hart. Yeah, with a mustache and the sideburns, yeah. right? Well, I remember him from back then. So we get there, and he's there. And he actually got me, got me in. And he said that uh, Gene, Gene said something about Little Rusty. Is he all grown up? <laughs> and, and Big John said, yes, Little Rusty's all grown what, up. What, was, was this the... Um the farewell tour? Yeah, one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, them. I, I do believe it was. Back I do believe in 2000, it was. yeah. Yeah, because cause I think on that tour, John Hart came back, and I think he might have been like driving a truck for him on that tour. 
Okay. Um, and yeah, I was I was at that show because I was working with them at that point in time. So really? I went to the Mandalay Bay show for that. Nice. Because that's where they played nice. the farewell tour. And we and my buddies have been out all day, and they said, "You want to come backstage?" I said, "No, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I never, you know." My cousins feel like I, I don't know how to word that when you've talked to them. Um, regardless of how they broke up and what contracts were signed, what albums were produced, and all that, that's between Kiss and my uncle. You know, they don't owe us anything in any which way. My uncle had a great life. We got to see some things that we never would have seen. He he got to see the world. Right. Yeah. And and literally. they got you know I remember go, I remember going to a restaurant one time back. We went and see him like when I was like twelve. My grandma and I. Went, went out to New York for a week or so. And I remember going to a restaurant that was mind-boggling nice. And, and that's, you know, what was I, 10? And so that kind of stuff, you know, the pickup truck. Gene actually paid for my uncle's funeral, which if any Gene people are out there, please say thank you again because I would have had to. And nice. a coin, somehow a coin made a phone call and he said, you know, I'll do it. Um, and, and so that, that – Did, I did, have did no, any, anybody from the KISS – camp and family come to the funeral uh, well a coin was there um bill and lydia lydia okay. chris and my uncle i guess had a relationship off the charts i still talk to lydia through my well let me say this i've talked to her a couple times my dad and her have become good buddies that's how dad got the kiss convention gig okay. got it. where he sat there with the name leon delaney yeah. sean delaney's brother and then his girlfriend came over and you know, it's all connected serendipity if you will got it so so lydia chris is still a uh, part of of our circle but that's it um, Kiss came, gosh, when did they come? A couple years ago? And I tried, I said, Dad, you know, can you try and get us tickets? And Lydia said, those connections have been dried up for years, especially since a coin and Sean are both right. deceased. My uncle actually died yeah. on my son's birthday. Oh. Uh, what was that, 11 years ago? Mm. Wasn't that in yeah. 04? Yeah, yeah so, um, but no, as far as, as far as I go from Kiss, I love them. I, I got to see great things that I've never seen. I've got to tell stories, and, and you know, and also to this day, and you can tell all the Kiss fans this out there. I guess they're listening. Um, I wear a name tag at work, and it says Russ Delaney in big bold letters. And those of you who see it that are Kiss fans, they'll actually ask me if are, are it, you the Delaney? Yeah, are, are, are you related somehow? And when I tell them I'm Sean Delaney, they'll go on for hours. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, again, and that that's why I started this is just like as Kiss fans, I didn't know there were other. I mean, yes, there had to be other Delaney's, but I didn't know. It's, it's never been talked about in books or history yeah. that Sean had a brother, that Sean had a nephew that was there. And all of a sudden, it comes out, and you're just like, oh my God. And, and, and why this was important to me was because Sean isn't around to tell his story, which, right. which is terrible. And, and the fact that you can tell what you see of his side of the story, I think is just great. I mean, this is the closest between you and your dad. That's about as close as we're ever going to get uh, to Sean's story actually being told. No, and it means the world to me too. And if we, if you want, if we can do this again down the road, um, my cousin and I will both went to Dixie College together. We went up to for Christmas or something. I guess it was springtime, and my grandparents had a house right on Paloa Mountain in, outside of Provo, Orm, Utah, where that where okay. they where my dad. Anyway, to make a long story short. We set out one night from about 7 o'clock at night, and that, the mountain behind us was there was a little bit of a fire going on, and the firemen were watching it. So we, my, my cousin and I and Sean set out on that front yard with that fire behind us from about 7 or 8 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning, and all Sean did was tell us stories. And, and I'm a talker, as you can tell, and my cousin and I didn't say a word wow. because what we, what we saw younger, not, now we're 20. <laughs> I had any regrets. I wish it was now that my uncle was the manager of Kiss. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, how great would that be to, to be an adult and be around all that instead of when we were so young? Well, so you that's, know, you know I, 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 I had made a comment you know, uh, episodes ago that, you know, Kiss did their reunion tour back in 96. But for it to be truly a reunion, I felt like not just the four guys had to come back, but Bill Coyne and Sean Delaney also had to come back. That would have been the real reunion of Kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would. That's so awesome. So, so awesome for you to say. And I'm actually going to the reunion. Uh, the reunion. I'm actually going to the Hall of Fame. Are you? Oh, you are. Yep, okay. Yep, I'm gonna, my wife and I. My wife's never been to New York City. I haven't been back since Bill and Sean were Kiss. So that was the early '80s. 
And uh, we're actually going. We got tickets through uh, uh, Bill's uh, partner in life is after Roman. Sean Roman. 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 Yep. Roman. Roman. Thank you, Roman. <laughs> if you're out there, I've talked to Roman. I don't know if I've ever talked to Roman because he didn't come. No, we didn't have dinner with Roman. We had, anyway, my wife's right behind me. <laughs> uh, no, no, he Roman. We went anyway. Enough of that. Um, we were actually going to the Hall of Fame in my uncle's honor. Now, if I'm going to be able to go backstage or go to Roman's after party, I don't have any idea. I'm just going in honor, one, for a vacation, two, right. for, for, uh, in, in, in honor of my uncle to be there. I mean, it's just the right thing to do. That's very if, cool. You, you know, know if I would, yeah. Tommy, we should, we should uh, get on with Russ after the Hall of Fame and just get a short little update as to yeah, maybe you could it, call what us. Was it, what was it like and what, how did it feel uh, I just to lost be there? Both of you. Yeah, I got the last thing you said there, Michael, was how would it feel to be there? So I would love to uh, come on after and, and just go into, because, you know, this is the first time me ever doing this. It was kind of exciting yeah. for me, and I kind of bounced around a little bit. But uh, to tell the stories that Sean told that night from 6 o'clock, you know, 8 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning, um, yeah. I remember that night like it was yesterday. Wow. And it was nothing but kiss stories, the station wag driving by around North Carolina and getting lost, and the and the jokes and the practical jokes they played on each other, and the 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 stories on the early beginning of the road. And I know that kiss fans out there, that's really what you, that's how you keep his memory alive. What happened to me in Spanish right. for Utah is just a you know a side bit that you did, know. Did 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 Sean ever talk to you about anything he regretted related to kiss? Was it like oh. They should have never done this. Oh, that was a mistake. Anything like that? I, I, I don't know if, uh, the, you know, it can be so personal when all of a sudden he wasn't working with him because it was his baby in his mind. You know, right, right. How, how much he had to do with it. Obviously, he had a lot to do with the beginning. But remember, there's four guys that also had dreams and goals to be rock stars their whole life. That, yeah. That, you know, it is them that, you know, did, did the majority of the work. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say bitter, a little bit bitter. Um, of how it all ended like you know they how could this happen when it was just the six of us at the beginning well you know all of us have been divorced and relationships most relationships and there's hardly ever good endings out there especially in the rock and roll business did did, right. did did he ever like say oh the the four solo albums boy they really shouldn't have done those you know I, russ I, you that, know, that, 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 between you and me russ boy that that was the beginning of the end or yeah, you know yeah. i was made for loving you in dynasty what was that the, the main I, I actually know what i love that song i do that's one of my oh, favorite yeah. songs <laughs> um it comes on at work and people don't even know that kiss sings it. they're like how would you know kiss sings that song i said oh i've got a couple reasons that I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. um i don't know if they, the i know a coin a coin used the term um word for word and and close in order when we had lunch in Hollywood that, that he thought that they'd run, you know, and, and that's well documented in all the Kiss books, and I'm not saying anything there that we all don't know, where right. he just thought that, you know, it was a nice 12, 13-year run, and, you know, they, they conquered the world, and now it was coming down, and it wasn't going to get to the mountaintop again, and, and he, he, he regretted selling them. He, he, he said that to my wife and I, word for word, did he not? My wife's over there shaking her head. Yeah. She's my witness <laughs> on that one. He said, you know, and, and uh, it would have it worked, I, I probably would, uh, then I'd have a lot more to do with them, or we all would somehow. And, and so that's a coin. And since it was his, you know, his, right. he was the, the head of the business, however you want to word that, the CEO of his company, that was his choice. Right. The fallout, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. A lot of people make mistakes in business. And who would have known that, that Kiss would, you know, because they did have that five, six year, seven year lull that kind of went down. And then when they took yeah. off again, it was just like. But as far as my uncle goes, um, you know, he produced Sean or Gene's soul album. Right. And yep. he, he, I think he worked a lot on Peter's too. Yep. Peter or yep. Aces. And so he loved those. You know, the more, the more responsible they gave him. One of my uncle's favorite stories, he says, I'm sitting in my office and the, the most famous rock star in the world to, at, at that time was Gene Simmons. This is my uncle's story, word for word. He says, he walks into my office and says, Sean, I want you to produce my soul album. So that was actually Sean's professional his favorite moment he, in, in, that he ever had. Right. I, I, I mean, obviously, when they started out and all of a sudden they're playing in front of 20,000 people and all that, it was all great. But as far right. as one on one, the one that stroked his ego the most, according to the stories he told me, was when Gene asked him to produce Gene's solo album. Fair. So that's, that's a good one. Was, 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 I, I've got that album out right was, was, was there ever any mention from Bill or Sean or that you heard discussions? 
around the makeup being taken off? Yeah, you know, I, back, that, at that point, I was back in Utah, you know, go, going, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, I remember when they first said they were going to, but I don't know any, you know, I don't have any story of whose choice it was or maybe it's time or, you know, trying to ruffle. But I, I think that was weird to all of us. Is even being a Kiss fan back then, forget my uncle being the manager, just a, being a Kiss fan. That was weird to all of us. What do you mean oh, they're yeah. going to have the makeup? Had to right. be a lot easier for them to get ready for shows, right? Did, 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 oh, yeah. did Sean ever say anything to you about, you know, I would have never had him take the makeup off? You know, that night when we talked with the fire, and I just, because my, my, our uncle was larger in life to both John and I and Dieter, all three of us. He was a larger than life figure. You interviewed him. Right. It's amazing how he just was, you know, he's just one of those guys that walks in a room and you know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, oh, shoot, I, he said a lot that night, a lot of stories, and I'm sure we talked about the makeup, but I, as, as, from his nephew to, to, me, to him to me, I never really got a sense of well, that was like the biggest deal. That's just my opinion. Sure. Right. I mean, he might have a different story on that one because obviously it's a, a big difference. But then, you know, the, the, the say they made it as musicians, and I know the Hall of Fame thing, which is unbelievable that it took them so long to get in. Come on. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Is, I think we all agree. Even if you're not a Kiss fan, that's a whole nother episode. Right. You know, they're still very good. Their music they put out, the, the hardest working band. I still, like I said, I've gone to hundreds and hundreds of concerts, and Kiss is still some of the best I've ever seen. I know that's biased in a sense. But as far as the energy they bring, you know, the live performance, you know, that's what Kiss Alive won. It wasn't that one of the original ever live albums. Yeah. If you, to, to understand Kiss, it was to see them live. They could sit in a recording studio forever. And that was, that was Sean's baby, as you guys know. The live, yeah. you know, the dance step, the, right. uh, the choreography, that the let's get it, you know, rock and roll. But they all had that belief that they were going to, they, they might not outperform people, they were going to outwork them. And, and to have the makeup and the gimmicky stuff, and I feel like I'm speaking for Ace Freely, is, you know, we're still very good musicians. And, and that, you know, to take that away, now we're going to prove to the world that we are because we already have the fan base they had. So I don't know if there's any regrets there. But I think, Sean, wasn't he, are, didn't a coin sell him before they took the makeup off? Uh, you guys know yeah. that timeline better than I do. Well, yeah, and, and, I, I, and I'm only just saying, you know, in hindsight conversations, you know, if Sean ever said, you know, I I don't know what they were going through. You should have never taken the makeup off. You know, the mystique was what it was all about. You know, I, I just want to try and feel that. what what he might have been thinking, what he might have thought of that period. Well, I, I will say Sean was always, even with his little country band that I saw and play down in Vegas in front of five people, I almost cried. I think I did actually walk out and cry knowing wh how far he'd fallen in the music business. Um, he was always trying to make it better. And I'm sure with the four musicians having to go out there every night and perform like they do, as good as it gets, I'm sure that always striving to make it better would almost get annoying sometimes. I mean, I'd have to ask Peter and Ace that personally. But he just was such a perfectionist when it came to, all right, now we made this, so next week we're going to make it better. I right. mean, I, I can exhaust people talking to him. I'm a public speaker for a living. That's what I do. Sean would overwhelm me when we yeah. spend time together. I mean, and that's what I loved about it. So, you know, if, if, the, if he would have been there when the makeup came off and it, if they would have thought that it didn't work, then they would have put it back on and maybe tried to even put it on better. Right. Trying to always try. And sometimes, you know, when it's good, what's the old saying? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure that, that sometimes, you know, hey, here we are, are. We're off the charts. We're selling out tours in record numbers. Isn't this enough? And then Sean just always putting, wanting to put the gas pedal on. He was like that. In his, he was a truck driver. Did you guys know that? He became a truck driver for a couple of years when he moved no. back to Utah. No. Yeah. Let's just say it wasn't his, that wasn't what he was meant to do in his life. <laughs> uh, but even, <laughs> even being a truck driver, you know, he got, he, he got his license taken away for trying to he put the pedal to the metal too much. Russ, so, we, you know, we've, we've, been, we've been talking for almost an hour here. Oh, wow. And, and, and I definitely want to do a second oh, chat with you in the future here. But I want to, and, and, and Tommy, if you've got any final questions, let me know. But I want to ask one final question. Did you ever get any impressions from Sean about what he thought of the internal tensions within the band, between the band members? Because obviously, when they started out, it was all for one, one for all, four guys. And, you know, and, and even by 78, 
you know, when, when a live hit, the band changed, the dynamics changed. It became right. a business. It became money. You know, did he ever express to you any of his thoughts on tensions and dynamics of band members? Well, here, here's, here's one of my f favorite stories, and this will answer your question. You know, when these bands play in these pubs, like my, my stepson's in a band right now, and they play in these little venues, and the, bar, the owner gets the, the cash from the liquor, or they get the door. Do you know these stories, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Well, my dad's favorite story is Gene, at the age of, what, 20? Already had the business part going. As we all know, what he's done is just incredible. And he used to count, have my dad sit outside and count the, the heads that came into the bar. So at the end of the night, the bar owner would say, okay, we had 300 people come in. You guys get, you know, here's your cut. And Gene would be like, Leon, give me the, give me the real number. Right. <laughs> when most kids that age, and, and, and even the 50-year-old rockers to this day, all they want to do is rock and roll, and if they get paid, they get paid, and if they don't, they don't. Right. Right. So nobody can ever take the fact that Gene wanted to be a businessman from the get-go away from him because he's done things that some other bands could have done with the business stuff that nobody did. So to, to answer that question, Michael, is that, when you've got when you've got half the ninety percent or eighty percent of the people want to just rock and roll and the other ones are in it to make money, you're going to have tension there. What's right. what's important to you and what's important to you is two different worlds, right? Yep. So, um, the tension what I got from Uncle Stories was this: the people that partied weren't really looked upon well with the couple guys that didn't. Now that's my uncle's story. That's the ones you read in the book. That's not right. me. I, I never partied with them. I'd give my right hand to of, um, have a beer with with the big four, the big six, however you want to call it. That's what the difference between be, having your uncle be the manager, kiss when you're a toddler compared to when you're an adult. Right. Right. Um, right. So that's that was that's the only feeling I ever got. And as they got bigger and bigger and bigger, and everybody wanted a piece of them, then the six of them. Because at the beginning, it was the six of them. I saw yeah. it firsthand. I mean, it was the four, the magicians, my uncle, and, and, and a coin. And a couple other stragglers would come in and out. But, you know, every day, every time I saw them, it was the six. And so it was, it was their baby. And, and as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden people want a piece of the pie, just like when an athlete looks like he's going to be great in college, all of a sudden he's got 30 people that love him every day. Mm -hmm. Different. Right. So that's the only tension that I ever got stories from my uncle, is that they pulled apart that way. That they, they had different... Um, you know, and we know that Ace didn't like the the. You know, he wanted to be. Remember that what show was it when he walked, got mad on stage? We're not, we're not puppets. We're not, we're not lunch boxes. We're musicians. Right. So that's that's the only tension that uh, that Sean ever talked about was the tension between you know, are we gimmicky? Or are we are we musicians? And and you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Isn't that what why we get into the business? Right. <laughs> right, right, and I guess some some of the band members. Uh, anyway, well, so, has... I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I just I'll had bet. a couple things I didn't want to forget to ask. I got two, but I'm going to ask them one at a time. The first one I'd like to know is: Can you tell me anything else that you can remember about physically being around the band, like the night that you got to watch them go from start to finish of applying the makeup, putting on the costumes, and then going out on the stage? Uh, any any memories you have of of that type of interaction? Uh, well, being being in the lot, being in the dressing room at a young, being a young boy and seeing things that adults see and stuff like that, that will always stick to my head. Um, you know, the partying going on, the beautiful women, the you know, I, I still remember, I still visualize what the what the gorgeous girls look like, and I was seven. I mean, how are you going to get that <laughs> thought? I mean, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've lived in Vegas for 25 years, but I don't think I've ever seen more beautiful women in one <laughs> in a, in a in a in a I, and, and, and remembering the, the fun, I just remember everybody was having a lot of fun. And to this day, that's all I love to do myself. And that's what I, I mean. It, it was such a good, it just didn't get any better. And it wasn't me. I was living that through them. But to see right. the, 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 all of them together at the beginning, and they all, here they were playing in front of 200 people. And, and they would, you know, they would book any gigs they could book, right? right? Like right. any band. I mean, Van Halen used to play in garages in L.A. Right. So um, to, 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 to watch them always having fun, if there was any tension, and I'm sure that, I mean, come on, you spend that much time together and all that, but yeah. I didn't see it, but I was also wasn't with them every day. I mean, right. you know, my, my dad wasn't with them every day either because he was doing his construction still, but in the beginning, it was just, they were all in it together. And if they wouldn't have been, they sure wouldn't have made it to as big as they made it. Right. I, 
it was almost too much too fast. They weren't ready for that. They weren't. They they knew they were going to make it kind of big. I think in my you know I was you know seven eight nine at the time. Mm-hmm. They made it, to, and my uncle said this in a coin even that they took off so fast. I mean, here they are playing in front of ten people in a in a in a bar at and two in the morning, and the next thing you know, they're playing forty thousand. Yeah, and three years later, around, they're on top yeah. of the world. Yeah, right. I mean, who, who who how do you prepare for that? Is yeah, there no, a book that's out a very there? Good- that's a and that's a great point you make, and I think it, I love the answer. It was fun. They were it was happy. It wasn't this bad thing. So what we've heard about in the past of the beginnings is that it really was a group, and yep. your uncle and and Bill were a huge piece of it. Like you said, it was always the six of them. You know. Um, all right. So the other question I have for you then is, what can you share with us about Sean that you would like people to know about him? Good question. Oh, you know what? That that is a great question. Uh, Private. That's my wife's nickname. Uh, John, right? Just ask me what what would we want my uncle to? What would we want people to know about him? One, I would love people to know that he wanted music to change the world. I mean, he he would sit down and play. I don't know if you ever heard him play the piano or know he could, but he could have no. been a classic pianist. I mean, did I say that right? Pianist. I did, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He, he and I and I believe this to this day. I don't want the music to stop. If everybody would listen to music and positive music, you know that that the, the, there wouldn't be the wars and the and the there wouldn't be mean people. The, you wouldn't if you're listening to great music, you're not going to rob a bank. That that music was the cure, like the best medicine of all time. That's kind of like that. He used to have a saying, and I and I'll remember it the second time, and I'll write it down. But that that music. World, regardless of its religion, um, what side of the fence you grew up on, no matter you're multimillionaire, you got a doll in your pocket. We can all share music together, and it, there's, no, there's no bad about it. Well, some country songs can get kind of sad, I guess. But you know, <laughs> um, um, and one, he just the only person he was mean to was himself. You know, if 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 he loved and he had a heart of gold, and and he. He just, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of a little bit. I, I'm a pretty nice guy, and I'm being mean to myself. And I think that's what, you know, I think a lot of us, I won't hurt anybody else, but I'll sure be mean to my own body, right? Right. Uh, he, he would not hurt a flea. He would give his, you know, the old saying, the, the shirt off his back, the whole shooting match. He had a heart of gold, and he wanted everybody to feel that heart and how to do it. His biggest disappointment in life is he didn't make it as a rock star himself. I think right. you guys know that. You probably, Michael, in the interview you did with him, which I loved. I think he touched on that a little bit, did he not? I, I mean, his. Yeah. have you guys ever heard his album? Oh, yeah, Sound I've got his album. album. Yes. I've got his yeah. album. Mm-hmm. I mean, tell me what's the difference between that and Cat Stevens and Gordon Lightfoot. Besides you said timing, right, John? Timing. Yeah. Tommy. It's Tommy. It's it's all timing. It's to- I keep saying John. I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. Don't okay. worry about it. It's, it's yeah. all timing. It is. You're right. It's all timing. Um, but, you know, but... One last thing is was 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 Sean touched by the the reaction, the love the fans had for Kiss? Did he take that personally to heart? As in, I'm you know that means a lot to me to see the fan connection that this band has. It it, it did, but his bitterness, which I would try to help him with, the bitterness of how it ended, how he how how could he not be like Steve Jobs? Got I wish I knew I, I wish. I've said that Steve Jobs got fired from the from the company that he invented. Right. Uh, I, so then the movie. Um, it, he loved the fact that how much credit he got. Like I love ACDC. I don't know who owns them. I don't know who their manager is. But you see Kiss fans all over. We you know, like I said with my last name, and when they have tattoos, I'll pull out my ID. That meant the world to him. I mm-hmm. just wish while he was alive that that would have overcome the bitterness of how it ended. Because he just yeah. would not let that go. You had the, the in his book. I wish you to talk more about the great times. The great times. You leave his, you read his book. It's kind of depressing, right? Did you read? Did you read Hell, Bo- Hell I, Box? I I, I haven't because you know he was writing that and died in the middle of writing it, didn't he? Yep. So it yep. never really got finished. It's sort of a half 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 com- half complete. Yeah, and it's not a lot of the kiss stuff either, which I wish it would have been more yeah. about the kiss stuff for all of us. I mean, even for me, you know, not having all the memories because of the 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 young age. But I will say this. I wish he would have seen his funeral in Orem, Utah. I w- and, and, and if it's right and he was up above and he was watching down, then he did see it. Okay, we're not getting religious police by any chance. But um, there was about a block and a half of KISS fans in Orem, Utah, and some of them had Idaho plates and Nevada plates. 
and they drove up to give him his his kudos for what he meant to the early kiss. And there's here, here's this little uh, funeral at a Mormon church in a small town in Utah. And there's two blocks of kiss fans that couldn't even come in the funeral because there wasn't room. And they all had signs out, you know, we love you, Sean, the fifth kiss. That when people called him the fifth kiss, that that even if you want a minute chicken skin or however goosebumps right mm -hmm. what do you think that he would have said if he was still alive about this whole thing with the rock and roll hall of fame i i think oh wow you know what i and that's one of the reasons i'm going is that it would have meant everything to him even if he wouldn't have been invited i don't know what we don't have to get details there what would have happened how the invitation or what they would have got the kudos right but even no. worst case, worst case scenario he would have been in that area of that building. He couldn't get a ticket. And he would have been out and took as much pride of them making it as the four band members themselves because of the early beginnings. There's no doubt about that. And that's kind of why I'm going in his honor. To well, maybe you'll get a chance to talk to him. That would be great. Oh, I, I would love it. I, I would love it. And, you know, one of these days, again, I'll see Gene. I know we've been within 20 feet of each other many times. The Kiss, they have a Kiss putt-putt thing here. Right. That they had to pay Kiss for the name, and they come once in a while. It's a block from my office. I've actually walked into a bar and had and people tell me that Gene just walked out, or I've been this close to him like 22 times within an inch, and it, it will happen. Um, Paulie, uh, Paulie was my favorite growing up just because he was so... Um, Batman like or Superman like Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paulie did. I don't know if he, if he didn't. He never round kids. I know he just has a new one now. But Paulie was like super. He wasn't real to me. He would come. And I felt like I would run because he was such a, a figure bigger than life. And even though that's what Gene comes across more with his character, but because Gene and his love of kids and he used to be a teacher, he was more real to me. But um, Paulie and I. I interacted, I interacted with Ace, with and, Ace Peter and Peter a lot. In fact, I was with—I remember my uncle and I and Peter went to Peter lunch went one time. time. Um, um, th those two were more real to me because I think they spent more time with my uncle, especially through the years. But Paul is the one that was the, my my superhero. If you will. So you you <laughs> you you refer to Paul as Paulie. Is that yes, what people called, called him early on? Yep, that sure is. You did not know that. I, no. I, you didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we all called him Polly. Um, Melanie, Melanie's got that deep, she's from, she was from New Jersey. We just lost Melanie. Um, Kiss's first secretary, Bill's right hand gal, how my dad met her and, um, beautiful. In fact, um, Polly and her had a little friend. I'm not saying dated by any means, but Polly thought she, my stepmom was beautiful. And if anybody can say who's beautiful, um, and that's what they called him. And my stepmom said it better than anybody. When she said it, it made the whole room fill up with Polly this, Polly that, Polly that. But yeah, that's what they called him. And I'm sure to this day, some of them still do. Bill did at the end. Still referred to him as Polly. That's great. That is. That's, uh, that is that's good stuff. I just love the fact, you know, that little bit of Polly, that little, that's what they called him. That's what Bill still called. To me, that's the beauty of this type of discussion is just, Discovering these little minutia. <laughs> well, and and, and keeping keeping you know now with with Bill passed away, keeping both them. I mean, Bill's memory and his legacy. You know, Kiss talk the the, the players the, the players. Geez, they talk about a coin all the time. They give coin all the credit, and when they do, and that's what Sean didn't understand. I said, Sean, when when they talk highly of Bill, they're also talking about highly about you because you were Bill's right hand guy, both in 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 right. private life and professionally. So they just, right. just because they don't say Bill and Sean, just like the House of Blues, Ace's right-hand guy that didn't know who my uncle was. It stung for a second, but then he lit up when he talked about Bill. So right then I had to practice what I told my uncle through the years. When they're talking about Bill, it's saying you two in the same, it's not, there's not one without the other. Right. Yeah, right. I would agree with that. Bill, Bill brought the connections, as you all know, and a little bit of the money part because he had a little, you know, he, the, the finance part. So my uncle didn't have, a, 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 you know, he hitchhiked in New York with a $20 bill in his pocket. So Bill brought the money into it. This is what I explained to my buddies. A coin brought the money and the connections, definitely the connections. And Sean brought the imagination and the creativity, and, and the four of them brought their dreams and goals. I mean, you know how Ace got the job. You guys know how Ace, when he uh, auditioned. He walked in with two different sneakers. 
yeah. and then there was like 10 other people or 15 other people getting ready to audition and a, a said y'all can leave now right <laughs> and, i don't know why that's just one of my favorite early stories and that one will stick to me you can all uh, the, the the lead the lead guitarist of kiss just walked in so you can all leave and you know I, i'm a big i'm a big rock and roll fan and, and you know you read these lists they're all great they got paid to play in front of 40,000 people and sold millions of albums. I don't care if it's ACDC's lead singer, Van Halen, Ace Freely, Eric Clapton. They're all great for who they play with and that sound. But it makes me feel really good when, when you read the, the Rolling Stones' top 100 guitar player list of all time, and Ace is right, right around the top 10. And, and we all, I mean, he's a great guitarist. He's killed it that night at the house of blues and even though i didn't get to go backstage and see him it was still an honor to stand there and represent a coin and and early kiss and my uncle and my you know all the early struggles and to see a still rocking and rolling and and he still can play a guitar as good as anybody out there and so I mean, that's just one of my favorite stories you all can leave now <laughs> that's awesome very cool <laughs> oh anyways all right fellas Right. This it? was the, the, yeah. This was awesome. It's been over an hour. I feel like we could keep going. We'll touch base after the Hall of Fame. Get some of your feelings on that, and um, you know, let's just stay in touch. My uh, my uh, my uncle, as you know, he he, he talked for ten hours. I'm the same way. I can see. I can go another hour or two. And you guys, and and I thank you all out there. And you guys, for when I when I Google my Sean, when I Google my Sean, when I Google my uncle, and I you know information highway, I'm, I'm I don't go on the computer very often. And to find you and Megan, I told you my dad just spent a weekend with Megan recently right. down in Florida. Um, you really need, you really should get my dad on. I think he'd I'm, love I'm to do it. I'm definitely going to hit him up this week and see oh, if we you, can get him on the show. Oh yeah, that's right. You're Facebooking, right? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, and he'll, yeah. He'll, he'll, he's got some great, great. I mean, he was, you know, he was there, and he's got the great stories of the, you know, being on the road with him and. I wish I had those same stories, but uh, you know I do not. But, uh, oh, right, yeah, but you've right. got an interesting perspective oh, yeah, because oh, of you know, coming as, up. Yeah, as as I said when we started, your perspective is seeing Kiss through the eyes of like a five year old, <laughs> and we yeah. all as five year olds. Could you imagine if we were five years old, you ten bet. years old, third grade, you and bet. you're like, yeah, I've got the entire fifth row at the Kiss concert. Yeah, who wants to? You know, every, I mean, that's just amazing. It'd be pandemonium. <laughs> I remember saying to myself, I remember saying to myself many times, pinching myself, going, how many third graders <laughs> are watching Kiss get ready for a concert? Yeah. I mean, that's just, you can't, you can't. Number one uh, band in the world, and here yeah. you are able to just walk in and watch them put their makeup on uh, and hang out with them. And you can say Gene Simmons put you on his shoulders. But, I mean, you bet. yeah. You bet. It's, it's uh, went to dinner with them and, and, uh, and ate the famous, uh, for all you coin fans out there, I also had the famous vanilla eggs in the New City home. I even talked to him about it years later. Why would you put vanilla with eggs? And so everybody that's ever been with Bill for breakfast has eaten his famous vanilla eggs. I don't know if you guys ever got to try it, but I think you've all heard the stories. I, Megan talked about it, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I think she did. All right, gentlemen. Yeah. All right, all right. Russ, thank you touch. so much, man. Thank you. We will take thank care. Thank you, guys. Rock Thanks, on. Russ. Appreciate it. Bye. 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 Tommy. Uh, I think that was everything I could have hoped for out of out of a chat with Russ. I mean, it was, oh yeah, you know, going into some of these special guests, there's always a little apprehension of, is it going to be good? Because we don't do a lot of prep work with these guys, just so people mm -hmm. watching know. It's not like I send out pages of questionnaires and finding out all this stuff. You know, there's a little back and forth email with Russ talking about who he was and you know what 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 was his experience and relationship with Kiss. But at some point, I was just like, okay, I'm pulling the trigger on this because right. I feel like this could be cool, mm -hmm. and that just felt really freaking cool to sit there and chat for what an hour with Sean Delaney's nephew, who freaking third grade is hanging out with Kiss. And what a nice guy. Again, you know, and, and that's what we're looking for and striving for on this show is something that interests Mike and myself and, and subjects that we can be interested in bringing to you, you know, and this is a perfect example of that. And it's funny that you bring up Megan and, and Lynn because to me that's exactly how this one felt also. It felt like talking with them too. They have a very special place in yeah, all of this. Small, small place in history. That no History. one knows about. 
Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know Megan's name before this. I knew of Lynn's name, but I thought yeah. her moment came and went. And you know, as I said in in the, the discussion with Russ, geez, I thought there was only one Delaney out there, and that was Sean. And and when Russ came across my inbox, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, it was and, wonderful. And, and then and then. At, as that's happening, I uh, get introduced to his father, Leon. Mm -hmm. Who we'll bring up uh, uh, here. You know, and I'm going to I'm chatting with him, and we're going to get him to come on the show and talk about his early experiences working with Kiss. Um, just I don't know. This is the type of stuff I love to do is just talk to people. Because mm -hmm. I, yeah. I feel like if it was you and I and Russ and Joe Sensors, this is the same type of conversation we would have had with him. This is a perfect. This is a perfect way for me to envision what we were talking about when we first put the podcast together. Is these types of conversations, whether it be somebody famous, uh, you know, a musician, or someone like you know Russ who was just there, or just another fan. Yeah. You know that this is what interests me the most is this kind of interaction to learn new things and hopefully all of you people that are out listening to it whether we're on Spreaker or you're watching YouTube you guys are feeling like you're a part of this as well because that's I, our goal. I, I I love the very end where he's like yeah Paulie this and Paulie that and I was just yeah. like wait talk to, you're telling me that was what everybody called Paul was Paulie oh yeah Paulie. yeah Paulie 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 it's just like that little <laughs> thing was just cool for that to come out. Right. And also to just for clarification purposes, I am I've got the flu right now. But because we've had to reschedule Russ several times and he's been so generous with his time, I was not going to cancel today. So I did not say all that much today. It Mike's not running the show. He didn't hand me five questions, say, Okay, Tom, you can say these five things, but that's it. You gotta spread them out and shut up, Tommy. This They're gonna still believe that that's what you're doing. <coughs> yeah. No kidding. So just for clarification purposes, and also, too, there's not much to say when, when you've got someone who's willing to be on and talk like that. Listen, I mean, Eddie Trunk was the same way. When we get these guests who can talk and love to tell stories, I kind of just like to... Let them go. Let them go, and every once in a while, it's like, ah, you know. And, and clearly with Russ, I wanted to kind of go chronologically through his life, but early on, early on, it was just like, dude, we're jumping all over the place. I got to mm -hmm. ask this before we forget. And yeah, it was just, that was, that was fun. Yeah, it was like talking like, it was like talking with David Lee Roth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. All over. So, so, um, any, we're, we're, we're kind of dealing with the new direction of the show here. Do you want to do comments? Do you have something you want to discuss? Yeah. I want to, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do any comments this week. Um, this has been pushed back two or three times just from a scheduling perspective. So I hadn't spent all that much time feeling the way I've been feeling to look for a comment. But today I want to say a big thank you to all of you that are sticking with us and have supported us from whenever you came in to watch the podcast. And I don't know how many of you have noticed, but this is getting really exciting for me when we put up something on the page to talk about, you know, what's your favorite song on this record or like the thing with Mike when he put up the uh, boombox the other day, you know, it's all about memories. But what's really exciting to me is that you guys are not only, you know, posting your comments, you're also commenting on other people's comments, which tells me that you're actually interested in what we're doing because you're reading other people's stuff and saying, yeah, I agree or no, I don't. But everything is respectful. And it leads to these like four-day discussions, which I think is really cool. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all yeah. for being a part of this. I, I, I completely agree with Tommy. I've just, I don't know, in the last week or so, I really noticed that too. Um, the the sharing of stories and memories have just mm. been a, you brought up that boombox post and it was just like you know hey how many of you remember recording a song off the radio so you could play it over and over again because i have a vivid memory in in minnesota at listening to kqrs when they had mm -hmm. their like their own local metal show was going to premiere heavens on fire Oh yeah, and and you know I don't know it's like at a Friday at like midnight or something because metal shows. Remember this was before metal was trendy, so metal shows were relegated to like one in the morning, midnight, 
mm -hmm. odd times. So it's like, all right, I'm staying up, got the play and record ready to go. Play and record are down. The pause is already down as well. And right. now you're just sitting there with your finger on that pause button, waiting for the DJ to say, and now coming up the world, and you hit that pause off, and you record that first song. Oh, yeah, and, and what it took me back to, and I didn't make a comment because I saw several other people did, is that that's what we used to do back in the 70s when they were going to be on television. Yeah. You would record an audio of the Paul Lynn concert. You'd, you'd hold your, your tape deck up to the speaker on the TV. Yeah, and you tell everyone, shh. You know, and inevitably someone would be talking all the way through it. But yeah, and that's what we used to do. And to me, that's that's the neatest part of all of this. It, so it is to get you know, to, to find out. Like I wasn't the only one doing that. That all of a sudden, all these other people, all these other fans are sharing their memories of I did that and I did this, and you're just like that's that's cool. Because to me, to me, this whole thing about Kiss is about memories and stories right well and the reason that mike and i because we both grew up obviously in minneapolis we talk about places or, or stations like kq for instance is because it's just like anyone else that's from our age group back when we were young there wasn't cable tv and so there was three main tv channels and that was it there was very few rock stations so kq being a classic rock format when we're, you're talking about humble pie and and the cream doors, and all of that yeah. yeah they actually i remember um, right around um, early October, they played all four of the solo albums in their entirety on a Saturday night starting at like one in the morning. And the only reason I knew this is because I was staying at my brother's house for the weekend. He had four roommates and I'm like, I was up late because, it, you know, they're playing cards or whatever. And I'm like, oh, we got to listen to this. We got to listen to this. And they were all just like, oh, come, no way. Screw those guys. And they, they played it. They let it go. <coughs> And excuse me, some were like, "Hey, that's not bad," you know. It's like, it's like that whole comment you made about they took their makeup off; they sound great. Yeah, people just can't, you know. I don't know. I don't know. So any, anyway, I mean that that to me is what I love to see on our Facebook page. That's to me is what I want to see in, in in our special guests is is storytelling. You know, I want I want Russ to tell the stories he remembers. I want. I want to get his dad, Leon, on to tell the stories he remembers about being an early roadie. Right. You know, I, w I want, you know, maybe we don't learn anything grand out of it, but the stories can bring back cool little memories. Or, mm -hmm. again, I just, I put my sho myself in Russ's shoes and imagine what I would have been like when I was in sixth grade and Sean Delaney would have been my uncle. And, you know, you were the biggest Kiss fan in the world. I mean, how cool would that have been? Oh, yeah. And, and like the one thing that always takes me back to my childhood is, is whenever I open up one of those packages of baseball cards the with the gum. gum in it, they still smell like the Kiss It's the worst gum cards. in the world. Oh. But my God, the memories that come flooding like, back. Wow. And I'm sixth grade again. Yeah. You know? Yep. yep. Absolutely. Cool. So, um, guys... Oh, we need some homework here. Homework around Sean Delaney. What can we come up with? Um, well, let us know what you thought of Russ, obviously, as a guest. And then um, tell us what you think. How, how, tell us about your impression of what you knew of Sean Delaney or how important you felt he was to the band. Yeah, because what, I what, think what's your Sean Delaney memory in Kiss? Is it an album that he produced that you love? Is it a song? Is it a choreography? What, you know, yeah, tell us something about Sean. Yeah, yeah. Let's make this a Sean episode, you know? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. there, there, there's your homework. Head over to facebook.com slash three sides of the coin. You can go to three sides of the coin dot com. Uh, you can leave comments at youtube sides of the coin dot com. You can leave comments at spreaker dot three sides of the coin dot com. Yep. Um, just leave comments. I think we're going to get back into understand. We're just kind of resettling ourselves here with the change, but we're going to get back into voicemails. I want to hear voicemails. We get back into your comments. Yep. Um, you know, I think, you know, as you and I have said online, the show's not changing. We're just, we're just changing 
Oh, that's it. Yeah, and so, and also speaking of that, please keep sending your audition tapes in. We've had some pretty cool entries so far. I'm overwhelmed. So thank you to each and every one of you that have taken the time to show any interest and to send us a video. And we will be following up with each and every one of you personally. Just please give us time. This is all still kind of like we're playing catch up. So it's yep. going to take us a while to get this all sorted out. All right. So guys, until uh, next week. Later. Adios.